the next method we're going to look at is this hard surface communication device. And if we look at it, it's made up of several objects. It's 156,000 uh, polygons. And if we look at the textures, it's made up of multiple textures. So we have a texture set for a little bit of paint and a lot of rubber and plastic, another one for the yellow paint, and one last one for the uh, green LCD screen. So all, all of these are made up in this and each piece, there's a lot of individual pieces here uh, stacked on top of each other. Some things that you know are stacked right on top of each other inside of these Booleans. And what we wanna do is in the click of a button, um, make a whole new mesh out of this for a, a low poly. So we're gonna make a low poly on wraps and bakes all on the push of a single button. So to do that, we can go ahead and click on this communication device. I can go over to Instalod and we're in the remesh tab. And one of the things that we're gonna highlight in this video is the fuzzy fake face count target. And this is currently set to normal. And you can think of normal as uh, for like a PC game or, or for PC or console and then for lowest for something that's going to run on mobile or it could also be objects that are scattered around the world uh, really small and you never really get close up to them so the cameras never gets close enough to see the smaller details so we can use the fuzzy face count at the lowest setting and just get the, the overall uh, look of the entire asset and we'll run this uh, later on in the video but for now we're going to set it to normal. So that's setting up the low poly. The UVs are currently set up to be auto unwrapped. And so unwrap strategy here, you can see that we have several uh, strategies. So we have organic, hard surface angle, and hard surface axial, and then we have auto. And auto is gonna default to organic and treat it more like an organic object. So we're gonna start out with that, but it's not gonna give us the best result. The hard surface will give us a little bit better result. So I'll show you both of those uh, side by side. So this is ready to go. So now all we have to do is hit remesh selected assets. Let's reselect remesh selected meshes, I'm sorry. And like I said, this thing is made up of lots of different parts, uh, lots of overlapping parts, and just a quite a heavy model for 156,000 that we're gonna optimize down very quickly here. And uh, you can see that we're already at 87%. And this should only take about 20 or 30 seconds to complete. Uh, and again, we're making a low poly on wrap and baking our textures all in that, that amount of time. So I'm gonna move this over to the side and ungroup it and we can look at these things side by side. So this now, again, we came from 156,000 and now we're down to 4,300 triangles. And we have a pretty good result next to each other here very nice here. And if I turn off the textures, you can see that uh, even here where we had this piece in here with holes through it, it covered covered those up and remeshed right over them. Try to do the best it could to fill in those spaces. You zoom out a little bit, everything's matching pretty good. The buttons, you can see all these are separated. Now they're a part of the mesh, all welded right in, stitched right in there. All real nice here. And again, that LCD screen. Uh, detached is, is floating inside there, but you can see that it's a lot of remesh right over it. If we turn the textures back on, you can see them uh, remeshed right over it. So this all looks really good, but let's take a look at those UVs I had mentioned. So again, these UVs coming off fairly, fairly organic looking, uh, lots of twists, lots of cuts everywhere. And, you know, some of these cuts are going in, in strange spots. Um, for this for this hard surface model. So let's run this again. But this time, let's run this as a hard surface axial. And I'll go ahead and hit remesh selected meshes. All right, so it's finished and we can move this one over and you can see that this one just completed in 20 seconds. Um, and let's take a look at the UVs again. So these UVs, you can see 
much bigger face selections. You know, the entire back here is, is one giant UV shell. So it's, it's treating this like you would normally unwrap a hard surface object, you know, fronts and backs and sides and, and cutting down seams uh, at, these, at the sides and everything where you want them. So much better result for our, our hard surface uh, UV unwrap strategy. So this one looks good. And we'll set this one and I'll, I'll name this one as fuzzy face count normal. That way we can take a look at these things side by side as I change them. So like I said, we can do different uh, face counts, but we can also uh, change the settings for these, these here. So we can use surface construction. We have different resolutions for these different constructions. So we could set this to lowest. And the reason I may want to do that would be you know, so maybe some of these parts are getting too much detail, or like I said, this one, it tried to fill in these holes, but it did a, it did a pretty good job. And we can try out lowest for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the communicator, uh, entire group for the high poly. We have fuzzy face count to normal and resolution to lowest. And we'll take a look at see, and see what the difference is here. So again, we did create, you know, we went down from 156,000 to 4300 and this new mesh is going to be even lower than this 4300 one because it's it's doing the new low poly at a lower resolution so i'll move this off to the side and what you can see here this is a really good example of the two is that there are lots of boxes in here lots of different angles and stepping up between these things and this one did a much better job uh, going over all of those pieces well depending on, on how much detail you want um, so you can see even in here did a much better job in there where that overlap was so much nicer and much, much cleaner and again this one just went from 4300 to 2000 so we're at half the resolution as this one just by changing the resolution set to lowest so I'm gonna change that back to normal and we're gonna look at the fuzzy face count uh, target and we're gonna set this to lowest so this one could be our PC slash console and the next one will be uh, for say mobile and we'll take a look at those things side by side so I'm just gonna hit remesh selected on our high poly All right, and this one's done. So the lowest one is done. Again, very, very quickly. And this one is now almost about 700 triangles. So we've gone down from 4,300 to 700 by going to the lowest uh, fuzzy count. And you know, if we if we zoom back, like I said, maybe this asset's just placed around on desks or in corners or on shelves. So we don't need a lot of polygons for those types of assets, but. If we zoom out, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between all three of these. So we've got a very good result, even at this lowest setting at almost 700 triangles. And we have lots of different pieces. We have cylinders sticking out. We have cylinders on the top for the antenna, um, all kinds of different parts. We have uh, extrusions in that from these, these booleans and everything was captured pretty well and works, works really well from a, a, a slight you know, short distance from the camera. So this one will work very well for those types of things. So this one, we'll just call this one lowest so we can keep this one around and we can see the two. So again, if I turn off the textures, we can start to see how this thing was created and how low the polygons are for it. And the comparison of the two. So that's all great. And, but what if you wanted to, say, animate some of these objects? What if we wanted to create a new mesh, but we wanted some of them to animate? Um, you know, we wanted these knobs to be able to turn. You know, we have, we have this up here that could turn, or any of these pieces, uh, we could have them turn. Or another model, maybe you want pieces to come off and, and, and be able to swap them out and do things like that. So with that, I'm just gonna set this back to normal 
And that can be achieved through distinct uh, construction. So we're going to check mark this. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a new low, new low poly remesh for each one of these individual objects. And what that's also going to do, it's going to retain all of the pivots and, and it's going to do really well with the baking because it's not going to bake onto each other. So even though that each one of these is remeshing to a new low poly, um, these assets are going to be individual. So there normally would be a chance that, say, this one would bake onto the back of here or this yellow paint would bake onto this. But the way Insulot is set up, it's going to uh, treat each one of these individually when it bakes and we'll get no bleeding of the wrong uh, parts baking onto the other parts that we don't want them to. So we'll just hit distinct construction here. And again, everything's all set up. So we'll just hit remesh selected meshes. I'll select everything. And again, we're baking at normal and normal, just like we did for the first one. And we still have the, uh, the hard surface UV strategy selected. All right, great, so now this one's done. So I'll just go ahead and group it and unparent it. So now we have the new mesh here. And we can see that uh, the new mesh was all, uh, all created here. So each one of these is individual. And we could take a look at this. Let's take a look at, say, this front knob. So knob two, if we scroll down and we find knob two here, they're both individually. So all the names match still and also, what you'll notice is the pivots match as well. So we can still animate these if we wanted to. And another thing to notice is if we select everything here, and like I said, they won't bake onto each other for the normal maps, is that we don't have any uh, pieces getting baked onto the wrong ones. They're all baking onto each other individually by each mesh. So all of these are selected differently. And let's take a look at the poly count. So again, this poly count was set to normal, normal. And for the first for the first one that we did, that gave us a mesh that was 4,300. And now this one where every single object from the high poly was baked down um, into a new low poly, this gave us a poly count of about 60, 6,200 uh, triangles. So really nice there, not a big jump even by having everything um, individual objects. Um, so this works great for you know animated objects or we can we can apply the same thing to skeletal meshes with lots of different parts and you know everything's going to bake appropriately and onto the right pieces and that's that's really really great. So let's take a look at the wireframe one last time so the shading everything looks great between all of these and the wireframe between the three of them. And one thing I should cover is that even though each one of these meshes is now individual for the remesh, it is still put onto one single UV and baked to the same two textures that we baked, so the tangent space normal and the color map from the high poly. So we didn't create a new UV set for each one of these. It, it, it packed everything onto one single UV set. Uh, and there we go. We have this all unwrapped and uh, you know a new poly a new low polygon mesh created unwrapped and baked all the textures with a click of the button and you have some of the options here that you can uh, use to target different types of resolutions for your models and one last thing to talk about just to cover it is the adaptive resolution and what's great about this is why we're getting you know really good uh, breakup across this why this um, this knob has more polygons than some of the other areas is because it's the adapter resolution is taking into account the size of the asset and the importance and how much it can really optimize before breaking the silhouette and things like that. So, you know, you don't have to worry about smaller pieces getting optimized too much versus bigger pieces. Everything's done being done 
uh, for you very intelligently at the click of a single button. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this communication device being optimized down into a new low polygon mesh that we can use. Thank you.